Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Sean Kalecki, and today I'm thrilled to have Erica Vallejo uh, joining us today. Erica is a fractional CMO and the CEO at iFreshly Digital. They specialize in local marketing to help cannabis businesses grow with a wide range of marketing strategies. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Erica. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. I appreciate your invite. So what was it that really sparked the idea to get into marketing cannabis businesses? Well, one, my passion for the plant. I have about 20 years of knowledge of the plant that really excites me because I nerd out on a lot of the things about the plant and how it affects, you know, people and why, why people use the plant to alleviate things that they're going through, whether it's mental or physical, there's so many things that the plant helps with. And I get excited about it because can change. I've seen it change people's lives. It's changed my own life. I think that people out there don't have proper access. And so there's a lot of issues that made me look at the cannabis industry and see that it needs leadership to help grow in, in the right ways to kind of catch up with other industries that are more established since it's an emerging market. There's so much, there's so much of those solid marketing principles that need to be put into place that just aren't there. And so there needs to be leadership in that regard to grow the industry, uh, not just for the dollars, right? Not just for profit, but to also keep in mind the people that benefit from at having access to the plant, having access without the fear of the stigmatization behind use, because that is a whole other issue, right? And so I saw this opportunity that it, it was missing in the market right now. Having real leadership that focuses on the plant and also the great opportunity and impact that we can have to rectify some of the wrongs that have been happening for, for decades from the war on drugs in the U S. So that was my main motivation of focusing on this, on this, in this industry. When I was first building my business, I, w I focused on every industry. I was working with all sorts of different companies, helping them scale, but I just wasn't at the end of the day, passionate or excited about any of the companies or the industries that I was working in. So I decided that I really wanted to get, get in the nitty gritty of a specific industry and something that I was passionate about and something that I saw myself being able to lead the way in a good, in a good way that could impact many lives for the better and impact the community at large on a way bigger scale than I could do by, by myself. I love your point of view. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started? Yeah, that's actually an interesting story. When I got into marketing, it was actually an experiment to be quite honest. So essentially I was newly pregnant. Uh, I was in my twenties and I could not hold down a job because I was sick. I was nauseous for most of my pregnancy. I had morning sickness, pretty much my entire pregnancy. I couldn't do anything but sleep, eat, and be sick. So I couldn't hold down like a real job for the duration of my pregnancy. So while I was pregnant, I was really thinking about, okay, well, I really want to stay home with my daughter. What, what, what can I do to be able to stay at home with her and, and give her a healthy parenting that she can thrive from? And so I started exploring different things online that I could do from home. I started a healthy parenting website. I taught myself how to build websites. I built back then I was, I'd have to install everything manually. I had to learn HTML, PHP, CSS, JavaScript, all these things. When I had her, she was sleeping when I should have been sleeping. I was there coding, trying to learn all these things. 
created a website about healthy parenting, did my branding, did my social media, automated everything to, to post to social media. My first post was actually a poem about being the perfect mom, but it was a sarcastic poem. And so I got picked up by a PR agency. They were like, wow, we really like your voice. We really like your tone of voice, the way you speak. It's very authentic. And we want you to work with us on these different brands. And so I started working with like on my first post, literally my first post that I ever posted publicly started working with like big name brand companies, like fortune 500 companies that I would never have imagined working with. And realized I have a really good knack for this. So I started working, doing brand ambassador, blogging, different, different campaigns, and I was able to build community. I was able to tell stories and, and, and just be part of this community that I didn't really have like in real life. I had it online. Right. So it was a very interesting journey. So I freelance for, for many, many years after that. And then I, I realized that I needed to, instead of just freelance, I needed to open my own, my own business and just go all in instead of just freelancing here and there to actually go all in and just pull in all of the skills and knowledge that I had, expand upon it, and then need to grow yeah, my expertise in marketing and, and to be able to help companies grow exponentially. And, and I used that, I mean, that was back in 2009. So, I mean, that's been, it's been quite a while. So I have quite a lot of experience in the marketing world, but a lot of it was self-taught in my later years. I've gotten mentors to learn from their mistakes and learn from what experiences they've had to shorten that time frame of where I can meet success. My goal is how do I get to that much quicker than trying to get there on my own, use other people's knowledge and experience to, to propel myself much quicker. Otherwise. That's an awesome story. I love it. <laughs> do you express a lot of your creativity through writing? I do. I do. I love writing. It's something I've always had a knack for. Even when I was in, you know, in, in, in grade school, I would go through creative competitions, a creative writing, creative storytelling. I remember my first like academic competition. I took it really hard. I, I did not do well in my first like competition where I wrote a creative story and I didn't place in the, in the competition. And I took it so hard because I put my all into that story, into that writing. And when I didn't even place, I was so upset. I want to be the best writer I can possibly be. And I don't care if people like rank me or, you know, or, or I'm compared to anybody else, but I know that I have something in me that is worth sharing, right? Telling the stories, especially because I have not had my own, like my own journey has not been super easy either. And I think a lot of people resonate with those like that struggle to success because no path to success is easy or a straight line. I think a lot of people resonate with that. And I draw from my experiences, all the pain, all the things that I've gone through to share in a way where people are captivated and want to do something or feel inspired. And that drives me like you can't force them but you can inspire them. And I think there's so much more power in that than, than trying to either coerce or, or, or really manipulate or trick people into doing what, what you want them to do, right? Marketing is, I get the art of doing that, right? Getting people to inspire people to action. And I think that's where I, 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 I do get a lot of, you know, satisfaction and, and creativity in my writing. Absolutely. What are, what would you say some of like the biggest challenges you faced in your business and how you, how did you overcome them? Some of the biggest challenges I think is, especially, I think I learned this as I pivoted to, to be directly in one specific industry in cannabis to operate within that industry is building up credibility, right? Cause I have years of experience in marketing, but 
with cannabis being a fractional CMO in the cannabis realm, it's a whole different ball game, right? Like you have not like no, nothing, almost like you're starting from scratch, right? Like, I, like pivoting completely felt to me like starting from day one back in 2009 when I was a stay at home mom, like what am I gonna do to get to where I wanna go? And I think that was my biggest, and one of the biggest hurdles I think was my own self-imposed hurdle of, oh, well, people might not think that I have the expertise because I've, I've hidden my expertise because of the stigma behind cannabis consumption, right? And so I have this, you know, self-imposed limitation of, okay, well, you know, as it's federally illegal still, will anything that I say now before legalization happens, will that even be used against me in the future, right? So these are real repercussions and real worries, right? Like, will I also obliterate my professional credibility, say that I decide that I no longer want to be in cannabis? Will that prevent me from working in other industries in the future as well, right? So it's 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 like this double-edged sword. It's like building up the credibility, but also insulating myself from any type of ramifications in the future as well, whether they're legal or professional, right? So it's like this very, very, very fine line to toe where I, I want to display my credibility and my expertise, but I also living in Texas where the program, the medicinal program we have is not like in other states. It's a low THC. Cannabis has become decriminalized in certain areas. It's up to four ounces. Um, in others, it's two, one ounce. So there's, there's different, it, it's coming, it's coming along, but it's still at the end of the day, it's still federally illegal, right? So these are ramifications that I don't want coming back on me either. So it's a very, it's a very fine line to toe. And I think that's one big challenge that I've, I've experienced, but I still operate to display my experience and my credibility in different ways that I feel like won't come back. Right. It's a very being very selective on my word choice, being selective on my content that I put out as well. So that can be a challenge. Met and overcoming it is just kind of facing it head on. When when I when I realize, okay, maybe I maybe this isn't the way to operate, especially when I see others fumble, right? I see other people in my industry fumble. I'm like, okay, how do I not do that? <laughs> <laughs> I make notes <laughs> and it can be difficult. And that's what, I guess that's one of the biggest challenges I face is really establishing that credibility, even though I do have, you know, decades of experience and knowledge is it, that's the biggest challenge I would say so far, especially pivoting in the way that I have to, from agency work to fractional CMO work. It's very different ball game. That brings me to ask, like, how do you maintain resilience and really stay motivated during those tough times in your business? I have developed a very strong network of, of peers in, in, uh, in marketing as well in, as well as in camp, because I think that's important. Everybody's, everybody has their own struggles. But sometimes it's easier when you have a network of other people that are going through the same things to bounce ideas off of, or even just vent to, to be honest, right? Because there's a lot of people out there that just like don't have anybody to vent to that knows like the struggles that you go through. And like, I, I've talked to many C-level executives and one of the main top, like one of the main things that they have like they struggle with is imposter syndrome you'd be surprised at that level you would think that everybody's confident everybody has it together because they seem like they do based on you know their online media presence social presence but most of them are worried that one day they'll be called an imposter that they don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, and it's just like this self-imposed fear, which is, it's kind of funny to see people at this level. I mean, it's not funny, but it's, it's a real thing, but 
it's 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 just one of those things like that's how I maintain my resiliency is talking to my peers and then also like I said I have a daughter and I always think about would she be proud of watching me fall and still getting up and still moving forward even though things don't always work out as planned would she be will she be proud that I that she's still seeing me move forward and I think about that. like she's she's my why that the reason why I keep moving forward like I've struggled even even to open you know as a single mom to start my business like when I first started I I bootstrapped everything I didn't take any investments I didn't have that you know tens of thousands of dollars to invest in creating my business I bootstrapped everything and she's seen me from start you know from start to where I'm at now and she's seen that progression and I know like it's a it affects her because she I see some of the traits in her and she's like no like even like she's in soccer now and she got hurt in her last game and her comment to me just the other day was I can't wait till my next day, my next game. I need redemption. <laughs> and it's just so funny. I'm like, I never, like, I never taught her that, but I know that she sees that within me. It's like, okay, we we got defeated, but how are we gonna redeem ourselves and move forward? So we think about that, right? Because she's seeing me. And even though I'm not verbalizing to her, she still sees it. And so I think that's what keeps me motivated and resilient to keep going, is that. I know that there's eyes on me, little tiny eyes that are paying attention, you know, and, 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 and really everybody's paying attention, right. With, with social media, everybody kind of has eyes on what's going on and people notice, right. If you, if you go overcome a challenge or you, you stay resilient, they notice that, right. And they, and even if it's not something that's, like I said, verbalized, people still feel that vibe. And so when you have a self-defeating vibe, people people pick up on that. And so you repel others. And I still think it's it's part of it's a mindset that you have to keep going no matter what. Like I've I've there's been a point in my life where you know before I had my daughter where I was even homeless, right? Like I actually had to overcome a lot in order to even be where I'm at now. I have to remind myself that the things aren't that bad. I can always move forward. I've been at the lowest that I could possibly be and I overcame that. So I can overcome this thing that, you know, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. I can keep pushing forward and I can still find the success because ultimately the more that I fail, the, more, the closer I am to succeeding. So I always have to remind myself that, that I can keep going by, by you know, you, sheer faith and, 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 you know, my relationship with God too. That's one of the biggest things that I lean on, especially when I just feel so empty or I've given my all, like I have to rely on that, you know, on, on my higher power, my, my God that I, you know, I, I have, that has guided me through. And so that sometimes when you feel like you just have nothing left, sometimes you have to find that what keeps you going. And it can, it's different for everybody. But I think that's been those, the, I do think those would be my top three God, my daughter, and, you know, knowing that my experiences are, are, they are what they are. But I also, I also have a, a network of peers that help me get through and help me think through some of those things as well. So that's how I maintain my resiliency. That's really inspiring. Like that, that was really great advice. I'm sure our listeners will definitely benefit from that. Awesome. Well, that is also a perfect way to wrap up this episode. So Erica, how can our listeners find and connect with you and I freshly digital? Yeah, so I am predominantly on LinkedIn. If you want to connect with me on a social level, that's usually where I'm at. So you can find me, just my my name, Erica Vallejo, uh, linkedin.com slash in slash Erica Vallejo. Or you can simply go to my website, ifreshly.com. You can even book time with me at ifreshly.com forward slash book. Absolutely. Well, thanks for listening to Failing to Success. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to follow us and rate our show. Don't forget to tune in later this week for another inspiring conversation with a successful business owner. Mm -hmm.